Hello, everyone. It's Mr. Spectacular here. Welcome to another episode of Technically Speaking. Today, we're going to look at what I believe to be the biggest opportunity of our lifetimes shaping up right in front of our eyes. Now, before we get into that, let me throw out a big, massive, bold disclaimer. None of this is financial advice. This is meant to be considered education and entertainment only. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a guy on the internet. Now, if you do need to speak to a financial advisor, make sure to contact a certified professional. If you do need some help with that, we can put you in contact with a certified financial advisor. Now, let me just wrap it up with my Polish disclaimer. Don't be an idiot. Trade and res invest responsibly. So you, can, you, you can lose your money. And we don't want that. Now, the first thing we're going to look at today is Google Trends and the interest for Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto, and NFTs as a whole. So as you can see, we peaked out in May 2021, had a smaller peak in October 2021, and then another one in January 2022. From then on, it's just been going down, 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 down which to me, it means one thing. Retail has left the game. Retail has lost interest. Retail thinks crypto is boring. I'm going to go on to the next shiny object. Now, the reason this is a massive opportunity is you don't make the most money when everybody's in. You will make your biggest gains in crypto when everybody's lost interest, everyone's down, Everyone's capitulated. Everyone's saying it's all going to zero and they're getting out. That's the time of, well, probably the biggest risk, but also the biggest opportunity if you can play it right. Now, just based on that information, not really, please don't make any moves. Don't sell your house. Don't go all in on whatever random crypto you think. Be deliberate with your approach and as you can see, as you will be able to see from the rest of this video, there is way more nuance to what I'm trying to convey to you here. So let's carry on to the trading view, look at some charts. The first one I want to look at is the dollar currency index, the DXY. Now, all these levels, this, col this colored levels you see here, this is the FIB retracement from the last major peak, which was March 2020, when all the lockdown happened, all the lockdowns happened, and everybody thought the world was going to zero. Let's stock up on toilet paper, forget assets, forget crypto. We need toilet paper. We don't want to be rich. We need toilet paper. So we've been tracking the movements of this thing pretty much from the start of the show. And it's just been continuously going up and up and up, which indicates that people are hoarding more, more dollars. They're getting way more risk averse. They are switching from risk on assets such as crypto and stocks and piling up cash. Now, what's going to be interesting to see is what's going to happen when we actually hit the peak level of this retracement. Right now we are at 102.8 and this thing is 103. So we are pretty much right there. It will be, like I said, interesting to see whether we will get rejected from it and start moving down, which would be correlated with assets going up, or are we gonna break through this level possibly have a bit of a retest and then continue going up. Personally, I do think the first scenario is a bit more likely considering also the fact that the RSI is pretty much getting into the highly overbought level. However, just to put it into, the pers into perspective for you, there is way higher than we can go with this. If we look at the monthly chart, and look way, 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 way back. So this is, this is like the peak for the recent times. So we've had this level in March 2020. We've had this level in 
December 2016. See, this is something I did not notice when I was preparing for this video, but this is a pretty strong level of resistance right here, at least in recent times. And considering we're looking at a monthly chart, this is this is pretty strong. So thank you for uh, your collaboration in noticing this. However, let's get a bit more doom and gloom and see how bad it can really get. So if we look all the way back to 2001, 2002, our peak was just around 120. If we go way, way back to 1985, we peaked out at 164. Now that was way before some of the stocks we've seen today, way before some of the, all the printing that we've seen in the recent days and way before crypto. And that is as far as the charted data will allow us to go. So there's a lot of worse than it can go. Uh, so if you think it's bad now, it can get a lot worse. Uh, however, we have been through numerous world ending events and inflation is something that we've been aware of since the lockdown started, since the printing started. It's only now that the news and the media are reporting it and everybody's starting to panic about inflation and they're starting to feel the effects of inflation. So overall, I think this can go a lot higher. However, I am still of the optimistic sense that it won't be just yet. The massive crash, the $20,000 Bitcoin, which I've been talking about, I don't think it's going to happen just yet. And as you continue to watch this video, I will explain to you why I believe so. But moving on for now, let's look at the volatility index. Again, this thing has been spiking up pretty aggressively. We've had one, two, bit of a pullback here, three days of significant movements to the upside, which also correlate with sharp um, declines in the stock market and in the crypto markets. Uh, so hopefully, We'll see this thing drop uh, at least below 30. Whenever this thing crosses 30, things get uh, pretty ugly, like we've seen in the last couple days. Now, just a quick look at the stock indexes before we move on to crypto and Bitcoin. So the S&P 500, it has dropped down to the levels where we've previously seen it turn around and start going back up. So this is the level we're right around now. It bounced off here, bounced off here, bounced off here. And then we have some pretty good support right around here. However, if this thing breaks, there is a lot, lot lower than we can go. So This level here is definitely, definitely on the table, at least if we break that, probably uh, next, next likely ones would be here, here. So first, again, I'd be watching what's going to happen with this, this level right here, the 4147. And here's the thing, guys, you have to consider all your options and you have to consider what you will do depending on which scenario plays out. It's almost like chess, it's like poker. It's like, okay, if, this, if X happens, I do Y. If A happens, I'll do B. You should not be in a position where you are dependent on crypto to pay your rent. Crypto... The way my personal philosophy is, like I sent to the um, to our email sub subscribers yesterday, crypto is a multiplier. It's for multiplying money. If you have a hundred pounds to multiply, well, if you multiply it at a thousand, yeah, you've got a hundred thousand. If you have a hundred thousand to start with, and you multiply that by a thousand, well, that's a whole lot more uh, that you can get. 
So your primary focus, at least my primary focus, that's income. And again, that's not financial advice, but this is just something for you to consider. Now, moving on to crypto and our good old buddy Bitcoin, which just uh, keeps throwing uh, temper tantrums. But first, let's look at the total market caps. So for the total, total crypto market, again, we've peaked out around here, seen a pullback, and we've just been staying on this trend line, moving up. We've not just, we've not further broken it just yet. And uh, obviously none of this is a predictor of anything. Um, I don't think you can predict the markets. Like some people say, oh, Bitcoin is guaranteed to hit uh, new all-time highs this year. Well, you, you can't guarantee it. You can't guarantee a thing. Um, you can only make the best educated assumption based on the data you have, but then it's going to play out or it's not going to play out. And if you're doing short-term trading, again, you react to what's happening in the market rather than trying to impose your will on the market. The market doesn't care. It doesn't care about your goals. It doesn't care that you have bills to pay. All it cares about is how many people can I wreck? How many people can I destroy financially? How many people can I impose pain on? That's what you need to be thinking about when you go into the market rather than, oh, let's get my Lambo. It's not that easy. If it was, we'd all be rich. We'd all be millionaires. We'd all be on the boats in Dubai. Fortunately, that's not the case. Um, so yeah, I have two, a couple possible pieces that, are, that I'm considering. So one, we just break all the way, all the way down, all the way, just a 50% drop, fairly quickly, fairly rapid. Um, I don't think that's likely, not yet. Um, second option, we slowly, 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 slowly bleed out over the next six months until everyone gets bored, everyone capitulates, everyone's like, okay, I'm done with this thing. It's been too long, I'm out. Option number three, which I think is most likely, we have a big squeeze up, probably right around here, just enough to get retail FOMO in. Because as you've seen in the trends chart, there's, there's hardly any retail interest, like nobody cares. When the peak prices are in, that's when they care. When things slightly dip and everybody says buy the dip, that's when they care. Right now, nobody cares. So the scenario that would make the most sense for me is that the whales are going to pump up the price just enough for retail FOMO to kick in. Let the retail rush in, buy, and then sell into the incoming retail because that's going to be their exit liquidity. And that's when I would make the, the most decisive moves, let's say. But carrying on to total twos, again, it all looks pretty similar. It's all correlated to Bitcoin total threes. Again, pretty much the same. Now, if we look at the Bitcoin charts with our FIB extension, not a whole lot going on here, really. FIB retracement, again, we're still in that green zone between zero and um, the 0.236 retracement level. I do think it's pretty realistic for us to, well, actually let's, let's look straight. Let's go straight into the next chart. So I like to have multiple charts, especially for Bitcoin. So it's not all in, in one spot, but if we look at the RSI here, it's, it's pretty low. It's like in the in the high 30s, low 40s. So that's just about enough for us to be able to make a move up. However, 
these two levels here, they've not been retested for a long time. So 37K, pretty much on the table. I uh, think 33, definitely on the table still before a potential move up, which may or may not happen. Like I said in the beginning, this is not financial advice and you can't predict the future. You cannot guarantee, okay, this pattern is starting to form, so this is gonna happen. You can't guarantee that. The people who say that, they do not have the power to move the markets. And people who do, they're the ones who print the charts. So keep that in mind. But like I said it earlier, you shouldn't have your rent money in crypto. You should be generating cash flow from other sources, whether it be a job or your business. So then you can invest. And if you're wrong, you can still pay your bills. Worst case scenario. Well, some people say sell now so you can buy lower. Um, I don't think that's an optimal strategy because whenever people get to that point, if you sold here because you predicted that or you expected that we're going to drop, so you're going to sell here so you can buy at a 50% discount, yeah, it makes sense. But you've ridden this all the way down to here and now you want to sell to buy lower, it's a good indication, especially if you hang around groups where there's a lot of new investors, it's a good indication that the bottom is probably in. Um, and the same works in reverse. So, I mean, look, you can make your own decisions, but that's just my two cents on the matter. So let's just have a quick look at the funding rate for Bitcoin. Zoom out a bit. There's quite a bit of negative funding, especially last couple, well, last 24 hours, lots of negative. Last couple of days, again, lots of negative funding, which means there's a lot, there's a lot of shorts in the market. Now for the whales, the market makers, their strategy is, okay, how many people can we wreck? So if a lot of people are betting things going to go down, quite likely the opposite might happen. But again, that's something for you to uh, study individual as well, because this video is starting to get long. So we're going to have a quick look at the fear and greed, in greed index, and we're going to wrap it up. Um, let this thing just load. Boom, average IQ is 100, oh well. So again, we are in extreme fear, 21. Look, just last month we were at 60. So this is a very, very fragile situation. Again, we've gone lower, but this is pretty, this is still pretty low. And as the old adage goes, you should be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Because despite what crypto Twitter might have you believe, for there to be a winner, some, there's got to be a loser. For you to make money, somebody else has to lose money. For you to get rich and sell at the top, somebody's got to be left holding the bag. So I like to think about this from the perspective of game theory. I like to think about this from the perspective of warfare, chess, martial arts. How can you trick your opponent into either surrendering or exposing a weakness that you want to attack? So that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to learn more about trading, more about my investing approach and strategies, you can contact me on Instagram at it's Mr. Spectacular. Uh, we will go over your situation and tailor a game plan specifically for you. And if you want to see the trades that I'm making on a daily basis, recently it's been mainly just quick scalps because I don't want to be
hanging in too long in the market. So I'm entering trades that I'd expect to play out within a day to two weeks maybe. So if you want to see those plays that I'm making and follow along while doing your own research and being a responsible individual, you can join our trading inner circle. The link is in the description below if you are watching on YouTube and in our bio if you are watching on Instagram. So thank you for your time. Hope you've gained some good value from this. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a spectacular day. See you soon.